Hey, millennials, pay attention to this conversation. Well, maybe if you're older than a millennial, you might be a little behind. We have a great webinar uh, opportunity for you this Wednesday when it comes to estate planning. Never too young to start talking about that. And all they said, I want to get the skinny from you. Appreciate you in the house. On behalf of Arnhem, attorney Janelle Hagedon. Good morning to you, Janelle. Good morning, Shelley. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, congratulations on your success thus far, uh, getting that degree and certainly uh, uh, moving on and here you are, an attorney with Varnum. Varnum, how do you spend your day? Well, usually I begin my day like probably most professionals, checking email. Um, usually check it from home a little bit while I'm getting ready, um, start to figure out what, what I'll be facing when I come into the office. Um, spend some time replying to the emails, um, meeting with clients about estate planning, um, and then also meeting with clients about estate administration after someone has passed, mm -hmm. figuring out how to get those assets distributed as they provided in their estate plan. Mm -hmm. um, so probably a split between that, um, and then drafting the documents. Mm -hmm. And occasionally joining uh, joining me on the morning show, right? That's right. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's get into our conversation uh, and uh, who should be tuning in this Wednesday. Uh, millennials, so why this spotlight here and certainly how are Millennials different in their approach to estate planning should they be caring? Okay, a lot of good questions there. Um, first of all, I think it's helpful to identify who is a millennial. Um, so the Census Bureau defines that as anyone born between 1982 and the year 2000, which means that now all millennials are age 18 and older. So all of our millennials are now adults. Um, and once you become an adult, there's at least two documents every adult should have in place, and that's going to be your designation of patient advocate form and the living will, um, as well as a durable power of attorney. Mm -hmm. So that first document there says, if I'm unable to make medical decisions for myself, who do I want to be making those decisions for me? And unless you have that in place, it's going to be the probate court who decides that. Mm -hmm. um, for the durable power of attorney, that's who can make um, legal and financial decisions on my behalf during my lifetime. So it's super important to have those two documents in place once you turn 18. Um, oftentimes students will go away to college without those in place and then if there's a medical problem kind of becomes an ordeal trying to figure out if the parent can step in and, and make those decisions or not. Hmm. Yes, let's talk a little bit about uh, more key considerations. Uh, first, uh, you, you mentioned this, but are we ever too, um, too young to start thinking estate planning? I mean assets are, even if there's a four-legged friend in the house, I trust that's an asset, right? Yeah, well absolutely, yeah. If you, if you don't make provisions for a pet, for example, um, they're just treated as property under the law. So whoever's in charge of your estate plan, if you don't put that person uh, in place with your documents, they could just drop them off at a shelter. You know, they have no mm -hmm. obligation to continue care mm -hmm. for those individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that as soon as you turn 18, you should have those two documents in place. And you should also start thinking about who, who do you want to get your assets if you should pass. Um, typically, uh, what brings in a lot of millennials into, into the office is when they decide that they want to have kids or they've already had a child and they want to make provisions for that child. Um, but if you don't have kids, then you may want to still make provisions uh, because there may not be an obvious person there to take your assets when you're gone. So you might want to make provisions for a pet, um, for other family members, or you might want to make uh, contributions to charity. A lot of millennials are choosing to give um, to the causes that are most important to them. Mm -hmm. um, so those are really important considerations whether you have children or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Back to the risk if someone dies without an estate plan. So if you die without an estate plan, um, just want to dispel a myth here. I had a family member recently say, well won't the state get all my money if I don't have an estate plan in place? Well no, that's not quite true. Um, there's a statutory scheme that determines who's going to get what. Um, it'll depend on if you're married, if you have children. Um, if you're not married and you don't have children, it'll go to your parents. Um, if your parents aren't living, then it would go to a sibling. Uh, and they have divisions. They have, um, they have more you know, rules depending on your particular circumstance. Um, but you also don't get to choose who's in charge. Um, so the priority of who gets to be in charge of your estate plan and making those distributions is also determined by law. Um, and if you're unmarried and you don't have children, then it would, again, probably be your parents uh, who would decide that. And you'd be, they'd be mm -hmm. dealing with the probate court um, mm -hmm. and trying to figure out um, how to make those divisions. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have a, uh, a way to help this Wednesday from noon to one. What's happening? 
I'm hosting a webinar with my colleague Rebecca Rock. Uh, Rebecca is an associate in the Ann Arbor and Novi office uh, for Varna. Um, and we'll be talking through some of these key considerations for estate planning for millennials. Um, we'll be talking about uh, pets, as you mentioned. Rebecca's the expert in that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be talking about um, student loan debt and whether or not you have to worry about it when you pass away. Will, um, will your parents be having to pay off your student loans if you should die before they're paid off? We'll be answering that question. Um, we'll be talking about what life experiences have shaped millennials' approach to estate planning. Um, and we'll be talking about the, the basic forms that you should have in place and some of the more sophisticated um, planning techniques you can use as well. Hmm. Obviously there will be opportunities for follow-up once the webinar is uh, over and done. Yeah, and actually during the webinar you'll have the option to submit questions to us. Um, so we'll have our presentation and then after that a Q&A session. Uh, but if we don't get to your question during the presentation, we'll be sending some follow-up through email um, with an answer to your question. Hmm. Yes. What is the, the first step uh, if a millennial uh, listening or a parent of a millennial uh, that, needs, uh, that needs to happen with an estate plan, somewhat in review? Uh, the first step would be deciding you know, what your goals are. Uh, most millennials aren't particularly motivated to just transfer wealth for the sake of transferring wealth. Um, they want to help the next generation avoid some of the burdens that they've faced, including student loan debt. Um, so they might want to um, decide to hold funds and trust for their children's lifetime and then permit them to use them for certain important experiences such as education. Um, so you need to kind of figure out what your priorities are and what your goals are. Um, then you'll want to identify your assets um, and make an appointment with an estate planning attorney to talk about it further. Mm, yes, and with uh, like any uh, 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 medical personnel, medical personnel, financial personnel, uh, estate planning is somewhat of a, an ongoing relationship? Yeah, absolutely. Oftentimes clients will ask, well, how often do I have to update this? Um, and the answer is usually whenever there's a, a big change in your, in, your, in your life, whether that's having a child, um, maybe you're getting married, or maybe you're going through a divorce. Uh, those are good times to revisit your estate plan. Um, and then when, you know, once you have those children, you might be planning for them when they're two years old. Maybe by the time they're 18, the circumstances have changed and you know your child a little bit more and you may, might want to make a change to your plan at that point as well. Hmm. Talking about a free estate planning uh, seminar for millennials, a webinar this Wednesday noon to one. How does uh, one log on to this and is there a, um, uh, do I need to make a reservation as such? Yeah, so you can go to our website, varnumlaw.com, and there is a link uh, to click on to register for the webinar. Um, and as Shelly mentioned, it broadcasts this Wednesday, mm -hmm. September 25th at noon. Mm -hmm. Great. Can anybody listen? Can a baby boomer listen too? <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think it would be helpful. Um, oftentimes, uh, it's the baby boomer parent who's getting the millennial in the door to do their estate plan um, because the parent says, hey, you need to be thinking about this too. Um, so I think it is important for parents to listen to and maybe you'll gain a little more appreciation for, uh, for your millennial child or your millennial relative as well. How old is a millennial these days? Millennials are going to range in age from 18 to about 37. Ooh. Didn't make the cut. <laughs> All right, one more time. Free estate planning for millennials. Website? Varnumlaw.com. Been hanging out on your uh, Varnum deck of late? Oh, yes, oh, actually. Yeah. Just last Wednesday. We had a, a, an event last Wednesday, a client party. Yeah, I know. You are all are very involved in the community as well. Thank you, Janelle Hagedon, uh, Varnum attorney, hosting a free estate planning. Get her done. Thanks.